In this video, I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite air conditioners, the Daikin Fit. And I'm not just going to give you my opinion, I'm going to be showing you the Daikin Fit in action. And I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between it and a traditional AC system. And I'll be explaining how it works, why it's different, and I'll even hook up some of my tools while it's running so you can see the difference measured in real world numbers. But the best part is at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about one of its glaring defects that will probably shock you. So if you're watching this video, chances are you're probably in the market for a new AC and perhaps your contractor recommended for Daikin Fit. And while the Daikin Fit is one of my absolute favorite ACs, there's several other considerations that you want to take into consideration to make sure that you are getting the best HVAC for your particular situation. So if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you do so because unfortunately I don't have time to cover all of those topics in this video. So what is the Daikin Fit and why is it different from other ACs? Now, just from looking at it, you can tell obviously that it's different because of the shape. If you are familiar with ductless mini split systems, the Daikin Fit will probably remind you of that because it is a side discharge design. And although this is nice because it has a much smaller footprint and smaller clearance requirements, this is actually not what sets it apart. There are three features of the Daikin Fit that set it apart and make it one of the best ACs on the market. Number one is that the Daikin Fit has an EXV, which is short for electronic expansion valve. And what an electronic expansion valve is, is the metering device that controls the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator coil. Now, if you are a homeowner that is learning about AC for the first time, what I just said probably sounds like a nerd speaking Klingon. Don't worry, noob, I got you. Now, a traditional standard residential AC system has what's called a TXV or thermostatic expansion valve. And the TLDR explanation in a nutshell is that an EXV is a digital version and a TXV is the analog version. In other words, the EXV is the internet and the TXV is the phone book. Therefore, in short, the EXV is much more precise at controlling the amount of refrigerant that is entering the indoor evaporator coil. And what this translates to is two things. First, your AC is much more efficient at heat removal. And two, this means that the Daikin Fit is quite literally better at cooling your home, even though technically it's not cooling anything. It's actually just removing the heat from your home through the refrigerant. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, don't worry, I'll save my rant about thermodynamics for a separate video. Now, number two, that point that I wanna talk on is the Daikin Fit has an inverter driven variable speed compressor that ramps up and down, whereas a single stage system is either on or off, which is why it's called a single stage AC, as in one stage of cooling. Now, the main benefit of a variable speed compressor is that on startup, it pulls very little electricity when compared to a single stage system. And like I promised at the beginning of this video, now we are going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Daikin Fit in action. So buck up, ladies and gents, it's time to party, or as they say in Mexico, tiempo to fiesta. Right now we are looking at a Daikin Fit and we have the panel off and we have our amp clamp hooked up. And what this amp clamp is actually measuring is a measurement called amp draw, which in layman's terms is the amount of electricity the Daikin Fit uses when it starts up. And it's been running for a little minute now and as you can see it's just turned on and on our amp clamp it is barely pulling two and a half amps and although that might not mean much to you and so that you have something to compare it to right now let's go take a look at a single stage system so that you can see the difference now this is a single stage ac and is probably what you are familiar with when you think of air conditioning now we have our amp clamp hooked up so let's turn on the ac and see what happens now, as you can see, the AC has kicked on. And when we take a look at our amp clamp readings here, you can see it was pulling almost five amps. And this is for the same size AC as the Daikin Fit. And in a nutshell, what this means is the Daikin Fit is way more efficient on startup. And the third and final thing I'll touch on, which you probably just noticed at this point, is how quiet the Daikin Fit is compared to a traditional single stage system. And for most customers, the quiet and comfortable factor is enough of a consideration alone to choose the Daikin fit, not to mention that your neighbors will love you and your quiet AC. The outdoor unit is one of the quietest units on the market. You can barely hear it when it's running. And since the indoor fan runs in unison with the cooling demands of the outdoor condensing unit, this means that your home is quieter inside as well when the system is running. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the Daikin Fit has one glaring defect that will absolutely shock you. And before I reveal that, if you've enjoyed this video so far, and if 
found this content helpful, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It takes a lot of time and energy to make a video like this and subscribing and liking is a free way you can support the channel. So, okay, that's it. I'm done asking. Drum roll, please. And the one glaring defect is that the Daikin Fit probably won't qualify for any high efficiency rebates in your city, state, or country. That's right, one of the most efficient air conditioners on the market doesn't qualify for high efficiency rebates from most municipalities and utility companies. And you may be thinking, if this thing is so efficient, why doesn't it qualify for rebates? And the short answer is one word, and that is bureaucracy. The full explanation would take an entire video in and of itself, but the long story short version is that municipalities and governments use an appliance energy rating called AHRI certificates to determine how efficient an appliance is when determining eligibility for rebates. And unfortunately, the AHRI doesn't know how to effectively rate inverters because of how they are designed. And as a result, they have a lower EER rating, which is an acronym that stands for energy efficiency ratio. And even though their SEER rating is higher around 17 or 18 on most matchups, they still don't qualify for rebates in most municipalities. And I know that's an anticlimactic ending for us because we you were expecting the glaring defect to be something exciting and controversial, like that it explodes on startup and the mainstream media is burying the truth. But no, that's not the case. It's that once again, our government is incompetent. And I hope you enjoyed this video and this content. And if you want more tips on how you can get the best HVAC for your home, make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch this next video.